Jesus Christ says, on that day, many would come to me saying, Lord, Lord, have we not done many mighty works? So there's gonna be a lot of Christians who get rejected by Christ on the day of judgment because these so-called Christians did not live for Christ. They called themselves Christians. They had a Jesus tattoo, they had a cross on their neck, but they're living in straight up sin. They're too busy sleeping around and having babies outside of marriage, all this other stuff. And they're gonna say, Lord, Lord, but God, I went to church. I went to church as a kid, but God, I had a Jesus necklace on. I had a tattoo of you on my, on my leg, Jesus. A lot of Christians, you're gonna have that depart from me. I never knew you when God says that because your lifestyle, your lifestyle did not match your words. Your lifestyle did not match what you said. When you tell people, I love Jesus or I believe in Jesus, then why didn't you live for it? Why, why didn't your actions back it up? The Bible says faith without works is dead. Uh, faith without works is dead. If you do not live for Christ, your faith doesn't mean anything. You believe is, is in vain. Your, your belief is in vain. So saying you're a Christian but living in sin, God doesn't care. It doesn't matter in the eyes of God saying, I believe in you and you don't do anything for God. The Bible says even demons believe and they tremble. So even the devil believes in God. So it's like believing in God is not some um, high thing. It's, it's common sense to believe in God. You're supposed to believe in God. You put it in you to believe in God. Even the demons believe and the demons tremble. The demons tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. The devil is terrified of Jesus Christ. There's no, there's no fight between Jesus and Satan. Satan cannot fight Jesus. Satan cannot fight God. Satan always runs when he sees Jesus, folks. So Jesus got the victory on the cross. He got the victory on the cross. Jesus Christ says all power in heaven and earth belongs to him. So understand this, folks. The victory is on the cross. There's victory in the name of Jesus. So you can have victory over your sin. You can have victory, folks, over your depression. You can have victory over your lust, your addictions. You can have victory in the name of Jesus because this world is getting worse and worse. There's more lust, there's more sexual morality. Uh, pornography is increasing in this generation. People watch too much pornography, especially Americans. You folks will even understand that most women who do pornography, they like kill themselves. A lot of porn stars, they kill themselves. Because that's not a lifestyle for anyone to live. You know, having sex with weird dudes, random dudes every day, porn stars hate their life. Most porn stars, they gotta get high or they gotta do some type of drug to do pornography. Cause that's how terrible porn is. And porn ruins your mind. It, it ruins the way you perceive life. So people, you understand the devil has many devices. He keeps you in bondage. A lot of people, you're bound up in, in pornography. You're bound up in masturbation and stuff. And this is why you don't want God, you hate God. Because all those pornography demons, all those masturbation demons are inside you. All these demons are telling you, you don't need God, you don't need Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Just continue your own lifestyle. It's wickedness. And wickedness is increasing this generation. And it's gonna get worse. It's gonna get even more worse as times go on. You got people creating sex dolls and stuff right now, folks. The devil's gonna put you in a hard bondage. If you think pornography is hard to get out of, it's gonna be worse than that. It's gonna be terrible, folks. So if you're stuck in pornography now, you need to get out because it's going to get worse in the future. You're going to get terribly worse. The devil is always planning. The devil is always plotting against you. You have you have an enemy, folks. You have a number one enemy, and that is the devil. And the devil is thinking 24/7, how can I send you to hell? You know, how can I send this person to hell? You know, that's what the devil does 24/7. While you're going to clubs and stuff, while you're, while you're going to bars and getting drunk, the devil is plotting, like, how can I send this person to hell? Like, is it pornography? Is it alcohol? Should I do drugs? Should I, should I, should I put it with suicide? How can I send this person to hell? That's what the devil says. You got a question? Yeah. What cologne are you wearing? I don't cologne. Yeah, it's it lotion. No, it's a yeah, it's lotion. I don't have a cologne on. It tastes like cocoa butter. It's just cocoa butter. Can I, can I keep you guys on um, gospel track? God bless you. Love you guys.
so fault the devil is sitting back saying, hey, how can I send this person to hell? You know what I'm saying? And that's what he does, he plots. The devil is not stupid. The devil is strategic. The devil deceive angels. Angels aren't stupid, folks. Angels are intelligent. So if the devil can deceive angels, of course he can deceive human beings who just get drunk and do all types of weird stuff and stuff. So this is why you have to understand your number one enemy is the devil. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. See, the devil has you going against each other. You know, all this Jews versus Palestine, black versus white, all this stuff is, is a distraction to keep you away from the true enemy, and that is the devil. Because if you cannot, if we cannot, if you're not gonna fight the devil, you're gonna fight each other, and that's what's going on right now. And that's why the devil has many people in bondage and spiritual prison. Because many folks, you put in your anger towards the wrong group of people. You put in your anger towards the wrong group. Because the media says, hey, is this, this people's fault? Is this people's fault? Is this and that? But no one ever blames the devil, folks. You, you ever realize no one ever blames the devil? People always blame God for stuff, but no one ever blames the devil. Why is that? That's how the devil deceives people. When the devil does something bad to you, you're like, oh God, why'd you do that? But you didn't blame the devil. The devil's laughing at you. The devil did it, but you're, but you're blaming Jesus. Come on, people, you gotta, you gotta understand. The devil is working hard against you. It's not God. God is trying to save you. God died on the cross for you, folks. God died for you. He shed his precious blood for you. Jesus was whipped. He was spit upon. He was, he was scourged. All this stuff he did for you because that's how much he loves you. Think about when you see Jesus on the cross, he was, Jesus had you in his mind. When Jesus was suffering, being mocked, he had you in his mind. But because he knew you'd be bound up in addiction, Jesus Christ knew you'd be depressed and suicidal. And he was like, I wanna die for my daughter. I wanna die for my son to set them free. So the love of God is, is amazing. The love of God is a true thing. That a loving God will come down and suffer for you. God humbled himself. God became a servant and he suffered for you because that's how much the Lord loves you. That's how much God wants, he wants you to be with him. That God came down and suffered for you because God gave you, God gave us everything. God gave us the world. God gave Adam and Eve everything. And Adam and Eve pretty much said, I don't care, God, get out of my face. I'm gonna do what I want. And God didn't turn his back. God still pursued us. Even after all the failures, God still pursued us with his love. So God is full of mercy. God is full of love and loving kindnesses. But God is also a judge God. So God is not just love. God is also a judge. Like you go to a courtroom, God is a judge. And God has to judge righteously to keep the, to keep the universe in order. Everything you see is in order for a reason because God is a God of order. So this is why God has to judge sin. God cannot let wickedness continue. Imagine if there is no judges. Imagine there is no prison systems, no judges. It'd be chaos. It'd be, it'd be like anarchy. It'd be like purge anarchy out here. It'd be crazy if there, is no, if there is no law. So this is why there is a law of God. And that's why God is a judge. And all of us is going to stand before God and give an account for our life. So if you step before God today, would you be prepared to meet your God? If you stood before God, if you stood before Jesus Christ tonight, what would you have to say for your life? When God reviews your life, what, what, what would you be able to give to him? Because are you living life to satisfy him, to please him? Or are you living life for yourself? Because I used to live life for myself too. I used to go to clubs and chase girls. I used to post my fitness pictures on Instagram and show off my abs and stuff. I used to live life for myself too. It's very easy to live for yourself because your nature is a simple person. It's, you're gonna live in your flesh. Since you're, a, since you're a fallen creature, it's very easy for you to be prideful. It's easy for you to be selfish because, you're, because your flesh is fallen. It takes more courage, it takes more discipline to live holy and righteously. That's why you see so many people living in sin. Because that's the easy way out. It's easy to get drunk. It's easy to have sex wherever you want. You see in this generation. But how 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 easy is it to have a true relationship? Many folks don't have true relationships no more. Many people don't have true love or peace anymore. 
to the, the things of God, you cannot get from the world. You can't get a, a good marriage and love and joy from the world. All this stuff comes from God. All this stuff comes from Jesus Christ. See, the world settles, folks. A lot of people, you settle for things. You settle for the bottom of the barrel. You settle for relationships that are toxic, that are terrible. You just settle for the worst in life because you don't have God. You settle going to clubs and stuff just to feel good about yourself because you're sad. You gotta stop settling for life. You gotta stop settling for sin because sin takes, it doesn't give. It's, it's a pleasurable for a season, but it ruins you. The consequences are, are, are they last long when you live in sin. So this is why you gotta stop living for temporary pleasures and live for eternal things.